everyone, Vince here. My latest video, just thought I'd show you my newest acquisition. I don't know if you can tell what that is, but uh, that's a light spider. Just kidding for any of you that might have taken me seriously. But this was a, a light that a, a friend of mine, Jacob, had. And uh, I was over at his house and he says, oh, you got to take this and put it in one of your videos. It is kind of cool looking. If I could get a red light or something to put on the front of it, it would be really creepy. But that's the light video. But I am going to be doing a couple of transfers today, so uh, we'll be uh, looking at doing that and getting some information about some of the things I've done transferring the tarantulas already. So let's get to that. All right, I'm back. We're going to be doing a couple of transfers to give you a little bit of background. The other night um, I did what I thought was kind of an emergency transfer of my Mexican rag, red leg, my uh, Brachypalma bomi. It looked to me like he was trapped in the bottom of the enclosure he was in and couldn't get out. Turns out that was wrong, but I ended up digging him out of there, um, which was kind of tricky, and I ended up transferring him to, into one of those enclosures that I gotten from Jamie's Tarantulas.com. But he's a little bit too small for the one I put him in. Um, so he doesn't seem comfortable in there. He won't stay still. He's up on the wall a lot, pacing. So I think it's too big. So I'm going to change him out of there tonight, put him in one of the little square ones. That'll be a little bit better for him. However, he did eat his first cricket. I had to kill it for him. Uh, he was afraid of it. Every time it came near him, he ran away. But once I killed it, he ate it. And that's the first time he's eaten it uh, since I've gotten him. And today is the one-month anniversary of me getting my five tarantulas. So one month ago today I got them. So I've learned a lot already. But he hadn't eaten in a month. So that, that dead cricket I gave him was the first thing he accepted uh, after his molt. So we're going to be moving him into the container that my uh, Serapagopis Shote is in. Because he's pretty good size and he's in the small container. And I know they say they don't need a lot of room. They can be in a small container. But I mean he can't even really stretch his legs out. And he used to do that and you can get a good idea of the size of them. He can't do that in there now. It's too small. And if I put a cricket in there and he's in there, I mean, they're, they're practically touching from one wall to the other. So I just think he needs a little bit more room. So I'm going to put him in the bigger enclosure that my Brachypalma Bomi's in. And I'm also going to transfer my Broccola Hursty. My Acanthoscuria Broccola Hursty is going to get transferred today. Uh, he's been in the Dunkin' Donuts Cup since I got him. He molted last week. Uh, that's the molt video I have out there that you saw. Um, I'm going to move him for the first time into one of his bigger enclosures. Now he'll be a little bit tricky because he's burrowed down under. He's got a big cave underneath, so getting him out of there will be kind of tricky, but we'll see how that goes. And I also wanted to give a shout out to uh, my buddy uh, Eli. He came up with a name for the Acanthus Curry Broccola Hursty that I really love. Uh, the other day he says, I think you should call him Bigfoot. And I think that's the perfect name for the Broccola Hursty. They're a full-bodied, heavy, thick spider. Uh, Bigfoot is perfect. The coloring, I think, is perfect for what you'd think of Bigfoot. So uh, the Acanthoscuria Broccola Hursty will here on be known as Bigfoot. And I have the Seripagopis Shote, which is named Lurch. So I just have three other names to come up with, and I'll be all set. I also wanted to show you something. Uh, my wife, I told you, is coming around a little bit. She's still not thrilled about having the spiders, and she thinks that uh, as they get bigger, she'll like them less. Hopefully it doesn't work like that. But this was her idea. She said I should keep the molts. So what I did is I took a little board like this. It's just a little foam board. You can get a pack of like five of these at Walmart for two bucks or something. And I put the name of each spider, like there's the Acanthus curia broccola hursty, and his molt is on there. And there's the molt, if I can get it good, of my Brachypalma bomi. My Serapagobus has not molted, so there's nothing there. Then we have the molt of the Hedroscrodra maculata. And then nothing for the Lacidora perhabana. But I'm going to keep them on this board here and to watch their molt successively as they go. So I have three confirmed molts, two that haven't molted yet. Um, the Hedroscrodra maculata actually I think might be getting ready to molt again. He was the first one that molted for me about two weeks ago. Um, he might be getting ready again because he stopped taking food again. In fact, i got to get a uh, cricket out of there. Uh, today. But anyway, enough of the chit chat. Oh wait, one more thing, um, a little more chit chat, sorry. Um, just a, a, a kind of cool story about getting into this this hobby. So again, if you're new, you're a beginner, 
One of the neat things is there's not a lot of people that do this. There's not a lot of people that keep tarantulas. Now, if you're online, you're going to find at the forums and you're going to find on YouTube what looks like all kind of people. But remember, that's a relatively small percentage of people that, that keep these. Uh, when you're looking specifically, you can find people, but not a lot do it. In fact, amongst all my friends, I'm, I'm the only one. And I had one of my good friends, Nate, uh, when I first told him about this, he had the reaction a lot of people have, like, yuck, what, why would you do that? Why keep a tarantula? They're disgusting. Well, now since I've been keeping them, he's all into it. He's watching my YouTube videos. He's watching other videos on YouTube of tarantulas. He's, he's texting me and saying, hey, did you see this video? Did you see that video? He's talking to me using the, the uh, scientific names of the tarantulas. He's kind of gotten into it uh, quite a bit. So um, that's kind of one of the neat things about uh learning this hobby is sharing it with other people that maybe never thought about it, never would have given it a shot or a chance, and now maybe they get a little bit excited about it. And so we uh, end up enhancing someone else's knowledge or, or appreciation of these creatures. So just wanted to mention that too. So way to go, Nate. You know, have an open mind, and that's been awesome. So I've been able to talk to my good buddy Nate uh, about uh, the tarantulas, and, and he's been pretty enthusiastic. So now on to the transfer videos. Okay, so I've got everything here that I need to do the transfers. So we'll just go over that again because this is part of the learning series. I've got my bigger Dunkin' Donuts cup that I'll use to catch the spiders if they do escape. That didn't happen last time, which was good. Uh, so we've got that. I've got the big enclosure from Jamie's Tarantulas that I'm going to um, put a big foot in. The Acanthus Curry Brocklehurst is going to go in this, so I've got that. One of the things I've noticed is uh, she sent the cocoa fiber, which is what I'm going to use also eventually. The cocoa fiber dries out a lot faster, obviously, uh, than the sphagnum moss. So either mix a little sphagnum moss in with it or mix it with some vermiculite. Uh, the vermiculite really holds the moisture, and again, the, the slings need the moisture. So uh, I noticed that I have to, to water a lot more with just the cocoa fiber. So I suggest mixing it with a little sphagnum moss or... Uh, a little bit of uh, vermiculite. So we've got that. Here is the enclosure that I have my Brachypalma Bomi in. So I'm going to take him out of here. It's just too big. He's very, very tiny still. And I think it's just too big, too much room. So I've got that. I'm going to take him out of there. And I'm going to switch him into this enclosure here, this little tiny one from Jamie's Tarantulas. This has my uh, lurch in it, Seri Pagopa Shote in here. And again, I feel bad about doing this because he's really made a good home of it. I think you can see there how much he's webbed it up and he's, he's really made it his own. But there's just not enough room in there. So he's going to get swapped out. They're going to swap containers. And then Bigfoot here, my Acanthus Curry Brocklehursty, he's going to get moved into one of those big containers. So I've got everything I need here for that. I have my small set of tongs my large ones, my little paintbrush again to prod them and move them along. Something I'm going to put in that I just bought that I'm going to put into um, Lurch's enclosure. It's this here. This is flexible. Uh, it's called Benda Branch from uh, Flukers and you can take it and do just what you say. You can bend it into all kind of shapes. So I'm going to I make a little swirl that goes up the center of Lurch's enclosure and then a couple of branches that come off because he really likes to uh, make the place his own. So I'm going to use that so that he has plenty of room to do it. I also have the little vial that we're going to try to get them into. Now something I did different this time that I said I was going to do last time but I didn't <clears throat> is I put little holes in the bottom, three of them, so that when the spider goes in Instead of me having to use a paintbrush and, and try to, you know, get up over the top of them from the back and push them out, what I did is I just took a piece of nylon from a broom, a common kitchen broom right there. You see that nylon? Drilled the holes in the back. So now, when I need to get the little guy out of there, there's those holes in the back. I can use the hole and just use this nylon there to kind of prod them out. Don't have to try to go in from the front with a paintbrush. So again, we call this the Learning Together series. So we're going to learn whether this works because I've never done this before. 
never tried this technique, but we're going to learn and see if it is easier than trying to get the paintbrush back in there and get the, the tarantula out. And the other thing we learned that I mentioned is if you're going to go with the cocoa fiber, uh, put some vermiculite in. And we also learned uh, together that if you have a really tiny tarantula, probably best to put them in a smaller enclosure. That's why now I have to move the bracket palmy bony because I put them in too big. And if you have a good size one, give them a little more room and that's why I have to move lurch. So um, kind of learned that together. I would have preferred not to have to move lurch a second time. So I'm now going to get the camera set up over this stuff so that we can do the, the move. I think the first thing I'll do is try to get uh, Lurch out because he webs everything in good. I'll try to get him in that little vial, set him aside. Then I'll reset up his enclosure and try to get the Brachia Palmy uh, in there. In fact, that reminds me I'm going to need two of these vials. So I'll get another one, drill a couple little holes in it because I'll need both of them out at the same time for a couple of minutes. All right, be right back. Okay, here we go. This is going to be the second transfer of Lurch, the Serapagopa Shote. Hate to do this, but I gotta gotta get him into something a little bigger. You can see again how well he's webbed everything up for himself. He really makes a good home for himself. He's up over here, uh, down in there. So I'm going to try to get him to come out into this section here that's kind of open, and then I'm going to have to lift all of this out because again he. He webs it all up really good. I'll have to lift that out. Then I'll have to put the little vial in there and try to try to get him to go out that vial. So I mean this is the webbing he does is just incredibly strong. So we're just gonna go back in there. There we go. Come on, buddy. Now if you can see him coming out there a little bit. You can see everything kind of comes out, and there he is right there. So I'm um, just going to kind of set this here for a second. So you can see him. He's right there. He's good size. What I'm going to try to do is put the vial in front of him, and maybe I can get him to just slowly walk into this. He wants to go back in. And I want to force him out. Come on, buddy. Yep. He wants to go out that way. So as was before the case, he's going to be a little tricky because I've really got to figure out how I'm going to get in there. <laughs> you can see how well that's clogged up and he's right there. So I think about how I'm going to be able to move all of this away. He's got it webbed up so well. And again, you don't want to hurt them. There you go. So there he is. Successfully moved in. He's getting a huge abdomen. I'm hoping he'll molt soon, but he came out of there all right. Put that on there. And there he is. Quite the specimen. So now I'll be able to use that little nylon thing to kind of hopefully pry him out of there. So I'm going to end up getting rid of all that. 
he does such an impressive job. I hope I don't have to rehouse him now. He's going into this big one here that the Brachiopalma bomi is in. So hopefully um, I won't have to rehouse him for a long time. Uh, the Brachiopalmi bomi, uh, the Mexican fire leg, he is underneath this piece of bark. So we're going to take that out. I think you can see him. There he goes. So he's still very tiny. I think this enclosure was just a little too big for him. So we're going to move him hopefully into this vial here. He's fairly fast so I'm hoping There we go. Now that was nice and easy. That's how we like it. So there's a good look at him. That's my Mexican red leg after his molt. He molted just a week or so ago. So there he is. Now I can do the work I'm going to do on the enclosures. I'll pause the video and then come back to it and we'll get them both transferred.